is this part ubiquitous how many of you can recognize the one that comes along with that and how many of you can recognize much more common this one and is there anybody who hasn't the, used these three things in the last one month okay one person it is it doesn't require a genius to tell where that ends up this is the common site commonest site i can on this is my first visit to the campus and i said i am going to vvit to deliver a vvit which is very very important talk so this let this be a vvit talk which i say because if i can leave just one more person to the million one in a one million i'll be delighted it doesn't require a genius to figure out where this bottle lands up and what did we face what is the why was vijaywada in the national news last week last month now let's go to that many people think floods are caused by rains weather change everything yes but is also every one of us in the human race what is it what did i drop every one of us or directly or indirectly contributing to this we conducted a survey we realized that the drainage of majority of the wards in vijayawada city which is almost next to the capital city that doesn't exist is because of the dra choked drainage flow culprit again that that three characters i brought along with you who is doing that we we took up the blame how many people are in the audience we are about 1000 people 200 people i don't know if i can play this but the names are masked but if you ask the driver he'll tell you last dashra not the dashra last week the dashra last year 2023 when we confronted the driver why is he dumping the waste directly into the garbage directly into the river you know what he tells us this is the chief minister's camp office thing one year ago exactly one year ago I mean just like you we are speechless too so so the so the machinery is not just the common citizen everybody is a stakeholder in this right 2012 years ago i am just a marathon runner and i went to run went to the river to run and look you what do you expect when you think you went to hugli river or many i see a lot of bengalis here that's why i picked up hugli hugli is equally contaminated but i know the data on the rivers the point i'm trying to say is you expect at least rivers in south india to be clean salubrious clear skies clean sands and beautiful place to run because you know how difficult it is to run on the roads these days you you won't it it would spare your limb or life so i went to the river and this is the site and mind you the water was not seen this is after cleaning the water this what everything is white the sands the water everything was so that that is what i say river drowning us i wouldn't say that it is the us we are drowning the river so in fact i titled the initial talk as save our rivers from drowning in plastic so let's see so what did we do so i could have just walked back gone back i just came for a practice my preparation for the chennai marathon if i remember right and i was spellbound by this there's no way you can run into this this is a so we did whatever we did to i just brought a next time visit i brought a bag into that mountain 
rolled the bag and just ran, finished my run. On my way back, I picked up whatever I could in that bag and came back. And when you come back with a bag, the full bag from the river, a lot of people would get suspicious. You would know what would they think. There's a treasure. And soon I, I spotted in a few weeks people coming with bags. It's not a treasure hunt. Probably it will be one day. It took us five years. Those people, people who came for treasures disappeared. We just continued our mission. We continued our running along the, along, through that plastic and the, all the filth. Five years later, few and a handful of us brought this to here. This is what. In, in fact, somebody did a fashion show on that green patch. It's river is supposed to look like that. So who, it is the river that is being drowned. And the same, how can you, how, this is the same highway you came on. You can see the Varadi there. And we covered this with our, what we discard every day. So how did we do that? So what we are going to talk now, from now on, how did, what we did, just engineers, medical professionals, a couple of IAS officers, even a stray politician, we don't encourage them, they did. They just joined me while I did, and they did that bag, and they picked it up along the way. Families, family together, there's a, there's a family coming on weekends with a bag, our runners, our swimmers, you can catch them. Even I can, you can see some of my patients. What did we find? So one day we decided to take matters in our hands, stop the vehicle, confiscated it, snatched the thing. And I walked into the collector office of municipal commissioner and the collector's office and handed over the keys. You decide what you want to do with this. Is this right? That is the last time the vehicle entered. And and they started dumping because unless an affirmative action at some end, there's no, nothing that happened. This is, you can see my t-shirt killed carrying the Chennai Marathon logo. We confiscated, we just took matters in our hands. I could have been arrested for that. Of course, people who have relinquished everything, you can see the politicians. Let us quickly get on. Well, this is a side story. This is for another TED talk. I don't want to get into this. This is actually, you can play with it. Oh. Okay, this video won't play, but with this another talk, we'll go at it. People were taking, when you neglect, the citizens neglect the river, the unscrupulous elements take over the rest of it. They, they, they were digging sand very next to the bridge you saw. You can see the railway bridge behind it. This is the Madras Chennai, Madri Calcutta, uh, Hauram Highway. You can see the Chennai railway line and you, the highway also run parallel to that. We were making them actually pour that. Put the sand back into the very pit where they put it. That is, we'll talk for another day. We don't have time for the play the video. But the point to be taken is, literally I stepped in to make sure we we, all of us just lied down before the truck and never let that vehicle take you that sand away. So what happens if you clean a patch even here and none of us are watching? In a few minutes, all the bottles will be here. The dogs and humans are not too different. They don't by nature. So what we decided to do was in the clean patch, we decided to green it. The volunteers who have gathered in strength. This is one of the Sunday. We decided to green the very, pla very place we cleaned and s see what happens. And in course of time, this is the, you recall the lockdown, national lockdown of 2020. We were all locked inside. We took permission of the Director General of Police. A couple of us, one of the guys still here, we just took permission, drove here, quietly did this work. We greened this place and we call this COVID park because we call it, co it was done during the COVID lockdown. Nobody knows how it has transformed into a nice park there. And into that park gathered the children. 
and that's how we had this nature camps. The idea of the nature camps came and evolved into parents bringing a lot of children along with this. Kids and it is not the parents bringing the children, children are bringing the parents. The other way around. Every Sunday at sharp 5.30 we have this. Till it goes on for three hours. And they said, eventually they said, the kids demanded, why is a beautiful river? It is a clean, you cleaned the river, why don't you let us swim? I had a swimming li less, uh, I had a swimming license in the US, coaching license. I started, why not? We trained a few coaches, one of them is here. And that's how the swimmers were born. Because to keep themselves fit, all the volunteers, we trained them in swimming, running, and that's lean and clean. The, the lean children cleaned the river, basically. This is the swimmers were born, and this is one of our Sunday nature camp. Out of these, skimmers. I'm talking about 12 years old story. I don't know, for those who cannot read, I'm just recording. No fencing can stop talent. They, they fence the river, you can see the barbed wire. Some of our swimmers grew up. This is a ch this kid, he's, she's not a kid anymore, she's in her 30s. She has grown up in the 12 years, she has grown up, she has become a national swimmer. swimmer won her competition in Chennai, is a sea swimming competition in Bay of Bengal. And we have made a mark, uh, rejuvenating the river has rejuvenated several lives. They changed their lives, it gave them perspective, a hobby, a purpose in life. And you can recognize this guy, he came from Bodh Gaya in Bihar, he stuck to us with us for the last six years. He has learned swimming, you can read him, Pankaj Kumar survivor, you can google him on the line. This guy, he's our lifeguard. He has, he is nominated for the National Bravery Award for saving 15 lives on the river. Every year we lose 25 on the river. He has cut down it by half. Did we stop? Now I'm talking about human rejuvenation. Reju river rejuvenation is over. The STRF, it's basically, how many of you heard of the STRF, NDRF, National Disaster Rescue Force? Those guys have just come have for training. They made an official request. They trained with us. We trained them for six months because we were losing this. We were losing, actually, the savers w were not coming back after jumping into the river. Not to the river, flash floods. So the, uh, we had an official request from the, their, their authorities and we trained them and now they are savers themselves. And of course, this is another one. This is the NDRF 10th Battalion staff trained with us. Ah, and there are, who are the other volunteers? Moms, housewives, and the gentleman with a shoulder pain. I'm a pain physician who does pay, I, I relieve pain for a living. This gentleman, from his long stand diabetes, came with shoulder pain. We fixed not only pain, we, he became, we made him a swimmer, and you can actually see him got, got rid of his diabetes and he actually swims. And he even cleans the river. Every Sunday he comes to clean the river. He's a young man. He's 85. He has become a quite a rejuvenated person. So does the story end there? No. What happened? Last month floods. Krishna River had Krishna district, that is the Vijayawada, Guntur district and s suburban areas, received unprecedented rainfall and we faced this. The half of Vijayawada was drowned. It's the national news. These elite swimmers of, uh, of this group, which you saw, they didn't keep quiet. Even before the police entered the scene, the police and this SDRF, NDRF even entered the scene. You can recognize them. These guys entered, went to rescue. Wherever there was a call, they just went and just pulled them. I'm not able to. That was birth of a new outfit called First Responders India. First Responders of India. So, what does that leave us? What is the lesson we learn? How do, what do we do to save our rivers from drowning? And uh, we did, a, what we did was a minuscule of what the river needed. What the river gave us for centuries, it fed us. As children, we used to see a full river, now it is 60% dead. We see the river and we say, 
oh my god how can i return what you have given us with the last 60 years of my life and what do what are we going to live for my children your children my grandchildren i'm just an angry old man a grandfather of three lovely boys and a, just a common man i want each of you to think this is a vvit very very important talk think of it clearly unless what are you going to do you, you see the bananas this is port pankaj grew you remember them maintaining those three parks what we they planted those parks have started bearing the fruit so what are we basically looking for we are basically looking for clean food clean water and clean air that is a luxury we are live in times where that is a luxury and if you want to maintain that lifestyle only unless we change we gather hands and come together and slightly change your own lifestyle introspect yourself kindly think about it go home and i'll come back to the very three characters i came along wherever i go i carry my bag and every the girl who raised the hand she said she never used the bag or the cup or the bottle we refused the, she refused the bottle carries the bag just brings her vegetables and if she wants water a refillable bottle it is not hard bring it next time the ted speakers will make sure there is a water fountain spout organized in in us australia many i don't know about the us but more very often in australia new zealand there are spouts they don't encourage water the nations are adopting as a policy and we as one and a half billion people why can't we make those change if how many of you are how many of us are here 200 if 200 bottles every day if each of you used water for bottle 200 bottle into 400 per year just imagine those numbers give the bottles to me whatever you drink i am going to make sure that we re recycle we are organizing a recycling collection and what do we do beyond that we carry a bag we carry our own bottle in fact i am such a fussy old man i take even my glass because they give you offer you tea in a cup of hot plastic thing and half of the plastic goes into it so my job is not to tell you what the plastic does to you but i can tell you what the plastic there are so many things that is another talk i can talk for hours about the microplastic and the nanoplastic but i am going to tell all of you that you are drowning our water bodies with the plastic you use join hands